What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today we are going to talk about the setup note. In previous videos, I've spent a whole bunch of time talking about goal notes. Goal notes are the most important notes in a phrase, the notes that you want to bring out, the notes that make the music sound really good. And I have brought up setup notes before, but I have never done a video dedicated to setup notes. So today I really want to dig deep into setup notes. Before we start the tutorial, if you enjoy my content, I would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. I've got a really big announcement about a project that I've been working on for several months. The launch is going to be within the next month, so definitely keep an eye on my YouTube and my Instagram for the announcement. All right, let's talk about the setup note. The setup note is exactly what it sounds like. It is the note that sets up the goal note. Now there are a couple of different ways that we can set up a goal note. And the main one you would think of is just playing it a little bit softer or doing a ghost note. And yes, that's true, but there is a lot more that you can do to a setup note than just ghost it. So I am going to use the first nine measures of the Charlie Parker tune confirmation to talk about a couple different ways to use setup notes. So as you can see, there are notes highlighted in yellow. Those are all of your setup notes. So I'm going to play these examples slow and I'm going to talk about exactly why they're setup notes and what you would do to make them sound really good. So you can see that beat one of the first measure is a setup note, which makes no sense. Why would that be a setup note? Usually beat one is really strong. The main reason that that is a setup note is because the quarter note right after it, the A, is your main note. So we're going to use that F sharp to set the A up. So take a listen to it. So notice what I'm doing. I'm not ghosting. I'm pulling it back. So I'm going, so I'm going ba -do bop ba -do bop So I pull it back so that the bop on the A is even stronger. Listen to it. So I'm going to do it in the whole phrase. Do you hear that? Now if I don't do the pull back, That sounds pretty good, but when I pull that F sharp back, it just gives me more of a nuance. It sets up the A a little bit more, and it just helps me shape the phrase a little bit better. Set up. That's full value. So you can hear that F sharp growing into the A. That's what a good setup note does, is it grows into the next note, or it sets that note up. The last one I just played on that E is a very standard setup note. We're just going to kind of ghost that note. It's the F sharp E to the G. So we're going to pull that back a little bit. We're not going to do a full ghost, but it's definitely going to be a pullback. So we've talked about that a lot. Pull that note back so that the G is more important. Listen to what happens when I don't pull it back. We just completely changed the shape of that line. So this is the standard kind of ghost pullback, the, the setup note. Now, the next one, we have a D quarter note on the end of three. Listen to how I pull this note back so that the G becomes way more important. So do you hear I pull the D back and, and land on that G? Do ba da, do ba da which, you know, it's a little strange to pull back the quarter note. You would think that would be the more important note, but that quarter note is definitely anticipating the G to the G sharp. So we're going to pull it back almost like a bell tone. Dong, boom, ba da. We're going to pull that note back and it's going to make the G, G sharp sound way better. Here it is one more time with the pullback. And here it is without the pullback. It doesn't sound nearly as good. I'm going to do the whole phrase so you can get the context. When you do it that way, it just sits there. Like it doesn't have any direction at all. So when I pull it back, it gives the phrase a lot more direction. And of course the setup note after that one is super standard. That D, whenever you jump down to a note and up to another note with a larger interval, it's always going to be a ghost note. You're always going to pull it back so that the top note has all of the power. So that would sound like this. It's almost not there at all. Like we're really pulling that thing back. We're going to ghost it. And that's typically what you think of when you do a setup note. But if you ghost every setup note, then the main note loses its power because the note before it is gone. So you have to be very uh, cognizant of what is going on in the music. 
uh, with how you do your setup note. Sometimes you're gonna pull it back, sometimes you're gonna ghost it, sometimes you're gonna sit on a little bit. It just all depends on what's going on in the music. But the main thing is find that goal note and figure out what you can do before that goal note to give the goal note more power. So here's that lick and this time I am not gonna ghost the D. That sounds terrible. <laughs> it's just painful to play. So we definitely won't wanna, we would wanna play it like that. So listen to it when we ghost that note. It just sounds so much better. So let's keep going. Again, we have another standard large interval ghost note that we're gonna use there. And that G sharp is super powerful. So we're gonna do a big jump and hit that G sharp and land on it like really strong. Now listen to what would happen if I tongue that low B. It just sounds a little weird. It doesn't sound right. So we definitely wanna do that setup note as a ghost note. Now listen to this last one. This last one is a little bit different. So we have that A uh, dotted quarter note on the end of three in the eighth measure. Listen to what we do with this one. You hear that? I hit it, I pull it back. It's almost like a sforzando, but the sforzando ends on the F sharp. Bow wop, bow wop. That is a super cool setup note. So you wanna hit that thing really hard to accent it because it's a long note off the beat, pull it way back, and then smack that F sharp with the release. So take a listen to it without the setup note. I mean, that works, but it's not nearly as cool. That gives you a lot more power. So the whole idea behind a setup note is to make the goal note, the main note, have more power. And sometimes you're gonna ghost the note to make the main note more important. Sometimes you're gonna swallow it, you're gonna pull it back. It just all depends on what's going on in the phrase around it. So your first step to making your setup note sound really good is to find your goal notes. Then right before the goal note, make sure that you are doing something to make that goal note sound even more powerful. I know when we think about a goal note, we just wanna play it louder or play it stronger or accent the note to make it a goal note. But oftentimes by using setup notes right before your goal notes, it can make them sound even more powerful and it makes the phrase sound really, really cool. So let's play the phrase one more time now that we've talked about all of the setup notes. And that's how you use a setup note to make your goal note sound even more powerful. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you now understand how to use setup notes, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment below. Thanks a lot.